Halloween 2018, the most recent film and entry in this franchise. Obviously, it was supposed to be Halloween Kills this year, but it got deleted one year later due to obviously, you know, COVID, hashtag Corona. So I guess 2018 was a resurgence for the series. I found this movie to be pretty good a bit of issues i have with it we'll get to those later but but yeah this was like a comeback for the series because nine years later nine years earlier right this is 2018 rob's arm is halloween too a lot of people consider it to be the worst i don't think it is but this was a resurgence filled with life and sort of passion and love for the series so let's get on with the facts so apparently jake gillahall convinced jamie chris to reprise her role of laura strode and consider him as a unofficial godson so yeah i didn't know they were, they were that close jake gillahall and jamie lee curtis seem they seem pretty close to be considered a family friend and a godson the the role of Allison, uh, Laurie's granddaughter, became somewhat of a converted role. Multiple popular actresses, including Lucy Hale uh, and Emma Roberts, met with Danny McBride to personally talk about the movie. However, the studio decided they wanted to go back to the roots of the first movie and cast an unknown actress, similar to how Jamie Lynn Curtis was in the original. Now, the good this Allison character, the granddaughter, is a negative sort of for me. She serves no purpose or role in this movie. She's there to not cause a rift, but just to be on Jamie Lynn Curtis's side, cause a strange relationship between her and her mother played like Judy Gere. The movie misses time for her to go into this party with her group of friends where their asshole boyfriend where he like cheats on her and throws her phone in, in the, the juice and then the friend to her boyfriend tries to get with her and she rejects him, friends with him and she's served no purpose. Anytime I went to her he's like why are we doing this? This is a time waster and that's one thing. It seems like they want to include like three different generations of like Laurie Strode or something. It was like I don't think we needed this but sure. Okay whatever. She she felt useless. That, that, that was disappointing. That was like okay you would say time for this Allison character which i'm assuming she would become a big character a huge character in halloween kills as for this movie she's just wasting time halloween 2018 became the highest grossing halloween film in the franchise in its opening weekend which was bound to happen because of you know inflation and today's standards and you know made sense nick castle he comes back to reprise his role as shape even in the credits it's credited as the shape diamond michael myers nice little touch to you know, the series and even the opening i think it's the same or like the reverse of the scene where the, the pump is like coming back or something that was cool to see as well danny mcbride said that they originally planned to do a two back-to-back -back films but they decided to scale back on one film quoted we were like let's learn from this and see what works and what doesn't explained by mcbride but we definitely had an idea where we would go with this branch of story and hopefully we would get a chance to so the two back-to-back -back sequels are halloween kills now slated to 2021 however halloween ends i suppose is the, the title of the th third movie making this a trilogy comes out in 2022 which i don't know if that's going to be the official date due to everything being delayed so yeah i don't know these were grant lit back in july 2019 so they they have time to tell their story they've already done shooting halloween kills so hopefully the writers or the producers and directors and who everyone involved in this movie when this trilogy does end on uh, halloween ends in 2022 probably 2023 they have time to rethink about you know what to do for the ending uh, well depends on how halloween kills does let's see if people like it or not obviously the film hasn't come out yet right as they had time to they come up with something or or refix like the, the supernatural the final two episodes weren't shot yet how However, they did do rewrites on it and stuff like that. You know, look at what you're writing, you know? You're not on a time crunch. Nothing like this will ever happen again, hopefully. Having extra time to rethink and reconstruct your writing because you're on time crunch and not on a time limit. Apparently, Myers is 61 years old in this film. Old as fuck. You know, it is 40 years later, which is, they treat this as an anniversary film, kind of like H2O, but also a sequel, which by the way, I forgot to mention, obviously it's another reboot, the second reboot slash remake. And it's also ignoring every movie except for the first one. So. They don't have the weird brother sister sibling thing this is just myers wanting revenge on laurie strode which is a more compelling more scary sort of motive by the way carpenter claimed this would be his last halloween film even though there are contractual obligations for a sequel yeah but basically just lies you know he's probably gonna be involved in halloween kills and ends no matter what hope he doesn't go through this again just like he did back in you know 1981 or 1982 you know so apparently in the early phases of pre-production the film was not to be a remake nor a reboot but a re-collaboration of the character of Michael Myers. However, after the co-writer and director David Gordon Green and co-writer Danny McBride took over the project, these two stated that it would be none of the sort of other movies, that the film was going to be a direct duration of the original Halloween, which is a good call. You know, four years later, feel like an anniversary film. However, it still kind of does. They, they do reshots of like, or remakes of the previous, of the original, but it feels like it's playing homage and being celebrated because it's a 40th anniversary. But it doesn't feel like cheap, like one of those, you know, 
Sharp Sharp remakes. Like when you know he gets out of this mental institution or asylum, it was like a one shot thing, just like Carpenter did in the very beginning, where young Michaels kills his sister, where this 60 old ass Myers he goes in a tool shed, gets a hammer, beats a person with it, grabs a knife. We see the blood comes out. He goes into a neighborhood. Kids run into him, just like the first one. And he goes into another person's house, look at the window. There's a da -da -da. he goes back around the shots on his young teen, and he kills his young teen, and that's how the one shot ends and stuff like that. Not only is that a one shot, which I love because of a daredevil, but that was cool. Paying homage to Carpenter's old work and doing something new, new about it basically, which is awesome. So the director David Gordon Green said in interview for Collider that the first cut of the film was two hours and fifteen minutes long. Probably would have been too long. I mean, this is a slasher, right? An hour thirty minutes, perfect. There better be a good reason as to why it is extending to two hours, because at that point you're kind of shredding a fodder and filler basically it's like mm, this is a well-known franchise it isn't anything new but even if it's a new entry to the slasher genre i mean shit it's something new you better get people's attention real quick or else it's gonna go be pretty boring but luckily it wasn't two hours 15 minutes something i completely forgot to mention in the rob zombie videos but the lurking behind in the background it is still here and i love that about the series and the franchise of myers lurking in the background people not knowing the characters in a movie not knowing what, what's happening in the background and him doing things like in this mechanic where he gets his overall he kills his two british reporters who in the beginning of the film goes with laurie asks questions about the, the night that she experienced and she's a very she's become a like a hermit right she's taught herself how to shoot a gun have multiple locks she's a very lonely woman and because of this she, she puts a string on judy gears character which is her daughter but has a somewhat of a good relationship with her granddaughter and she's a lonely old lady you know this is what she's turned into because of the events that happened in 1978 makes sense a little bit of ptsd kind of like the scene from h2o but she's not consumed by fear it, she still is but she's like more old lady badass in this one which is cool but yeah they pay her money so they can interview her these two dumb british like interviewers or whatever ignites a fume for michael to go and go kill again and he brutally kills the guy and th that teeth scene in the bathroom that was it that was in the shows everywhere that was awesome really creepy very gnarly very sinister he, he gets the, the mask which the mask in this movie looks good it's it looks aged and it looks you know pretty good i don't know which one's my favorite they even mentioned uh, the new dr loomis lore even says oh you're the new loomis which things like that will say a bit fan servicey right obviously this is 40th anniversary they're homaging and also paying respects for you know long time fans and fan service can be done but the fan service in this movie doesn't ruin the movie but it's more of like oh yeah yeah you don't really gotta say that or fan service stuff stuff like that like the new luma scene or there's i'm forgetting one i'm forgetting one part but like it's basically some of a fan service like part and it's like oh yeah very that's there but other than that it's you know it's it's still fine actor james jude courtney who plays myers consulted with the real life killers on how to kill people to make his performance believable in his own words michael has been locked up for 40 years so he has a long time to think about killing but obviously still efficient and driven so i want to make sure people see that in my performance that is dedication right there man going to real life killers it's very scary you do not want to be in front of a real life killer and yeah it's fucking creepy yo i did not know that that's very interesting to achieve the intro sequence of the pumpkin rising back up david gordon green revealed that a normal pumpkin was placed in front of the camera over a period of three weeks until it rot and slumped down it was then reversed and edited properly for the title sequence to give it the illusion that the pumpkin was rising on its own so basically uh, like a time lapse on these youtube videos where there's time lapse of pe people or just cameras on food and rotting away yeah i mean that was pretty simple i thought it was like cg or something but nope it was real real body nick castle is the oldest actor to play myers he's also the third actor to play him more than once and george wilbur who played him halloween 4 and then halloween 6 tyler main and the rob zombie movie obviously the core in the music was composed by john carpenter but also by his son cody and his godson daniel uh, davis so obviously you know he, he's getting up there in age hopefully he doesn't die in like five or ten years but he obviously needs help and he's still really good the, the theme is kind of the same good obviously but it's like clearly different it, i guess you could say it's more modern but it's still overall the same sort of theme the one two three theme oh god i guess i'll get into this with this film now there are five distinct halloween timelines so there is the first and original timeline where it's carpenter's halloween halloween 2 81 halloween 4 halloween 5 halloween 6 curse of michael myers that's the first timeline the second timeline is season of the witch halloween 3 right completely se separate continuity the third timeline is Carpenter's 
Carpenter's Halloween, Halloween 281, H2O, and Resurrection. And then the fourth timeline is Rob Zombie movies, which is Halloween 07, Halloween 209, the series reboot. And then the fifth timeline is the second reboot in a remake, Carpenter's Halloween, Halloween 18, to be followed by Halloween Kills, and Halloween Ends. So yeah, continuity and timelines in this movie is fucked up. I don't think, like, even Jason and Freddy has this issue. Yeah, they, they don't. You've had, like, most, like, three timelines? I think Freddy has three. No, you know what? I take that back. Freddy has two, and I think Jason only has two. Correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, no, there's not, there's, like, their timeline and continuity isn't as fucked as this. Obviously, there's some continuity issue with some other other movies, more specifically with the Friday movies, but, I mean, the five different timelines, that's just kind of ridiculous, if you ask me. Jenny Harris said in a live internet Q&A session on her social media, said that she put a call to include her character in the movie, but producers just were not interested, which makes sense because they were ignoring the events from all the movies except for the first one, so it made sense as to why they ignored it. The movie was released just eight days shy of the 40th anniversary of the 1978 original. I didn't know this. The filming began on January 13, 2018, which is kind of unheard of. Right, nowadays, movies are shot one year earlier for it to come out a year later, basically, but this kind of the same situation with the first one. This one was shot in the same year. Part of pre-production was part of the previous year, but shot during and in post-production the same year obviously there's a lot of scenes and kills paying homage to the halloween films which i don't mind as long as not every fucking minute it's like a shot shot remake personally don't mind and just name off a few the bus crash with the swim smith groves patients wander around similar to the halloween scene in the very beginning trigger shooters can be heard singing in the nursery around for the opening of halloween the male journalist killed in the bathroom was killed the same way as joe grizzly in rob zombie's halloween his first film slamming him next to the bathroom doors and i can't read all this 15 listening but i can't read all of them but the final one i will mention is michael apparently are being burned down in the ending much like he was in halloween 2 1981 well one thing i will say the ending of this movie while well, cool it's because it's kind of like you know like there'll be other like movies you know So when the ending happened with him breathing and apparently being killed by this fire, it was almost like, oh man, it's as if like I got just teased basically. Like we know this isn't gonna be the end. It, it doesn't ruin the movie to see her, her breathing, which kind of throws a wrench into Lori's plan. She planned this out for 40 years and one thing she wasn't counting on was ambulance going to the house fire. She didn't think things through all the way, but I digress. They're probably gonna explain how he gets out because obviously he ain't dying. Dimension Films lost the production rights for her sequel, which reverted back to Miramax, but then joined Blumhouse, which is now known as the Holy Grail of Horror Movies production. My house is funny. The working slash production title on set was Uncle Orange. Uncle Orange. The orange I get or Halloween, but Uncle? Sure, why not? In September of 09, Patrick Lesser and Todd Farmer, the writers of My Bloody Valentine of 2009 remake, wrote a script and even talked to Tyler May and returning to play Michael Myers, Trill either pitching a script, but the company shut down the production saying that the script was too good, or just was good, there wasn't enough time to, to fund the project to be finished in time. Okay, so there was, it seems like within those nine years, people were trying to pitch and then 40th anniversary came up, and like, you know what, let's have Jamie Lee Curtis come back. Yeah, even within those nine years, Halloween fans or just people in, in the industry were just craving for another Myers movie. But one thing I'm going to mention, the new Loomis. So in this film, he's revealed that he lit out Myers because he wanted to see him in action so while i like that idea this was just kind of poor execution so this new loomis has been studying for 40 years and couldn't get to him and so within spending time with those 40 years it sort of messes with his his mind and not mind but like he starts becoming more curious as to why myers wants to kill so he like lifts him free loose on the bus and sees him kills he kills one dude from freaking Mer a primer chains with Den uh, the denzel washington that white guy that i forget his name but that guy he kills him he kills that cop guy he was like i wanted to see him in action and it's like this sounds like a typical MacGuffin evil bad guy speech and it's like i would have liked the idea but it was just kind of thrown in there like uh just thrown in the rest of why how myers got out or something you know dr lupus is very prevalent very beloved by the halloween fans and assumingly they were disappointed by this because you know loomis was not really prevalent in the movie I guess, again it's not really about him even though he's very integral they kind of leave him out until he's just convenient to be in the plot and he's used as a basis as a MacGuffin to be like i let myers out which is fine Lori 
Trish told to her family. So Judy Gear and her husband, they were just kind of there as well. Judy Gear, I guess, owns up to be a badass, but she pretends to, to be crying and to be in fear. But she's like, "Gotcha." That was cut the end, but that's just at the end. Throughout, she like doesn't believe her mother. She believes she's going insane. Kind of like the same thing with and Josh Harnett's character and H2O. I get it, but it's like she was just kind of there. Her husband was just kind of there. The Allison character, she was useless. Her group of friends, they're there to just die, even though she survives out. The three, you know, three generations, I guess. They make it out in the end at this back of this truck. There were things I like about this movie. There are also a few things that were like, like on a directing and writer's part were just kind of mishandled. Like Allison just kind of being there, being useless. The daughter played by Judy Gear kind of wasted. Judy Gear is a great actor and she was kind of wasted, sadly. She was just kind of there. Hopefully both of these characters, Allison and Judy's care character, can be something else and Halloween kills and ends. Because man, this is me predicting, but I don't think Lori Strode's making it out in the second one. It looks like she's in pain and I think Michael's gonna kill her. Just like in Resurrection, piss a lot of fans. I think, that, I think that's what they're going for. It's just me though. But yeah, hopefully they can fix these issues in the second film. I'm hoping it's better. Hopefully it is. From what I've heard, I haven't looked up the, the spoilers, but apparently there's a rumor going around that it's the movie's going to be a lot more bloody. The bloodiest out of the, the franchise. And it's like, okay, I, I love me some blood and gore. Hopefully I'll like it. But that's just a rumor that's been around about a month ago, but hopefully it's true. Hopefully it's not. Again, I don't look up spoilers or rumors. Most of the time I like going in blind, but even if I do get spoiled on something, I don't personally mind or care. I'm still gonna watch the movie. It's always gonna go in not knowing anything. So overall, Halloween 2018 is pretty good. It's a great comeback for this franchise, a good resurgence for the series, and hopefully this trilogy, Halloween 2018, kills and ends. Can be good. Hopefully all three movies are good and can continue on with slashers and whatnot. This is the end of 31 Days of Horror. I will be doing my Halloween rankings. Hopefully, this is released on 31st. Hopefully it'll come out like six hours later or something like that. But yeah, this was fun. Obviously, I didn't get to watch 31 movies every day of each day of october that's one i don't have time two that will just be physically just draining and mentally draining watching that movie writing notes on it doing research on it recording it and then editing on the same day I, I ain't that fast okay so there was like the first like two weeks maybe half the third week where i had to like stockpile no way man so it was still a lot of work still a lot of hard work this was a lot of fun to do hopefully i can do this next year the plan is for these to do a franchise at the end whether it's 12 11 10 or 9 movies to do a franchise at the end or the first like 20 or something or you know, like one-offs you know or maybe like even a trilogy hopefully next year who knows maybe there's a theme too maybe werewolves vampires or just slashers and i don't know that's gonna be up to me to decide on this was a lot of fun hopefully you guys enjoyed it hopefully like, i did well a lot of mic issues in the, in the beginning like the it follows one mic was way too goddamn low i don't know what happened there but hopefully this isn't less low but yeah man i really enjoy this i hope this could be a traditional thing and yeah it's a lot of fun but yeah happy halloween obviously no one's going trick-or-treating but i digress happy halloween to you and everyone everyone watching right now thank you for watching and i'll see you in my next video and i will see you next october and next halloween for the second year of 31 days of horror thank you for watching